Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we are out on the Great Lakes. We're on Lake Michigan. We're going smallmouth fishing. We're going to do it raw and uncut. This is a full length video. I'm taking you guys along. We're throwing tubes, swim baits, hair jigs, all sorts of finesse baits for great big smallmouth. This should be a lot of fun. You wouldn't know it by looking at me here in a hoodie that it's the middle of summer. You can see this front leaving behind me. So there's heavy wind right now blowing that front out of here. But in a couple of hours, it's supposed to be nice, calm, high sun, really comfortable fishing conditions. So we're going to start out windy. We'll go from there. But these smallmouth love when that sun pops out. I think we're going to get some big ones today. If you're not familiar with this style of video, a couple things you need to know. I'm about to pick up a rod and get to fishing. You guys are just coming along. It's raw and uncut. Everything that happens, you're there for. It's full length. So if you want to watch for, I don't know how long this will be, two, three, four, five hours, you go right on ahead. But if you don't have time for that, if you open the video description where we put the links to all the baits and the gear that we're using and all that, in this video, we will also leave cut points. So it'll say, you know, four pounds smallmouth at 10 minutes and 22 seconds. If you click that, it'll take you right to that catch. So you can jump through the important catches of the day if you just want to watch that, or you can watch the entire thing. Let's get fishing. To kick this off, I'm going to start with a dark sleeper. This is a, a small finesse swim bait. It allows me to cover water quickly and try and draw these fish up. If you're not familiar with the Great Lakes, you know, they're giant. It's practically the ocean. Fish could be anywhere, but there are big, vast areas that parts of the year have no fish at all, and the fish really bunch up. So we're covering water quickly in search of areas where fish are grouped up. That is the goal. Now, once we find those fish, we can slow down with a variety of baits and really try to dial them in and catch a bunch of them. But first things first is just cover water and find them. smaller fish, but he'll get us started. Thank you, my friend. Well, that tells us that we are starting in an area with some fish. <laughs> That's the biggest thing. What we're fishing is light and dark spots. So essentially color transitions where this is mostly a sand flat, but we'll run across areas that are darker and darker can be a couple of things. It can either be rock. So where the sand and the rock meet, or it can be a low spot, a depression in the sand where debris gathers when the storms are blowing it around. Either way, smallmouth love those transitions. They love that switch from light bottom to dark bottom. They hunt right on those seams. So we're going to cover water, like I said, quickly, running down these banks, looking for those light and dark transitions. And they could be small, they could be five feet across, or they could be 50 yards across. The fish will use them regardless.
this storm blowing off and the sun coming out and the wind laying down I think today will just get better and better and better I think here in a few hours we've got a shot at catching an absolute giant they love when that sun pops back out He just came up off a boulder. I saw him go out onto the sand and follow my dark sleeper. Let's put a tube or something else up there. These fish just cannot turn down a tube. I might have bumped into the rock. I felt something.
Well, most of them can't resist a tube. But... So I'm clear as a bell that first time. Buddy. was already looking ahead for the next dark patch it's a dark one no wonder he stood out we'll keep going never fails on the big water once you get around fish they're just they're just never alone they're always grouped up the better fish Oh, I think we're gonna have a lot of fun today. It's a little shorty tube. I've got a really unique head in there with a, it's a small, but it's a heavy wire hook. It's a Blade Runner head. We've talked about it before, but we'll link all the gear down in the video description, just like every video. So if you wanna try any of the baits, know what a color is, know what a, which head it is, what size line we're throwing. We include all that information down there. I don't see any transitions, it's all bare sand. So I'm gonna speed the motor up, switch back to a dark sleeper, just try and cover water quickly.
I got cracked. A dark sleeper. These all seem like males to me. You know, smaller fish. By no means are they small. Anywhere else in the world, these would be really nice smallmouth. But out here, you, you see how they're skinny? They're skinnier, they're shorter. I think they're bucks. Hopefully today we run into big females. That's what we're looking for. We might be in the wrong area. You know, that's the problem with dropping into almost the ocean out here is you could miss the big ones. You could miss any fish or you can land on just the most incredible opportunity to catch giant after giant after giant. So if we go another 15, 20, 30 minutes in here and we don't get a big one, I think we'll make a run. We'll try something different. Maybe go out and fish some big rock points or something instead of fish in a sandbar to see if that's holding a different class of fish. I just threw out to a perfect dark patch. It's really black and probably a rock rock. Hopefully it's got big. Yeah, it's a series of great big boulders. No fish, none.
crazy. That's exactly where I would hope to find these fish. It's a set of boulders out here on the sand. I know you guys don't have the perspective I have. When I say it looks like the sand, I mean, it looks like the Bahamas. Just sheet white sand out here. And then you'll see these brown transitions where a little chunk rock will be running through it. Or you'll see big black spots where boulders are sitting on it. That's what we're looking for. Or vice versa. If we get on a big rock bar and we see those white sand patches on the rock bar, we're looking for that. Anywhere that it transitions. I don't know if my eyes are playing tricks on me or not, but up ahead, maybe 100, 150 yards, it looks like a big dark patch, big. You know, maybe 50 yards by 20 yards. Let's fish up to that. If there's fish there, we'll catch them, keep going. If not, we'll call it, we'll run to another area. Game off. That fish was up here on absolutely nothing. Totally bare sand. I don't know how I didn't see him. a boulder way out there. I might be able to reach that.
Oh wait, I can't have it. Nothing on it. I had a follower. Looked like a little one. Come back, come back, come back. Oh, gee. There's a school of them up here. We need the two. He's chasing it, he just didn't eat it. I can see him every time I move it, he scoots forward on the sand. But he just nipped it, but he didn't have the hook. Where'd the other one go? That's embarrassing. That was an entire school. Three or four fish that came out. I got bit three different times. We had the follower, then I got bit on the edge of the dock, bit again, follow up with a tube, get bit again. I caught none of them. That was bad. Amateur hour over here. Let's go back to the sleeper, keep covering water.
think he's going too fast. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? There he is. That was the right fish. Amateur hour continues, but at least we got him. So, in case you don't understand what happened there, or what that was, I'm coming across the flat casting and I saw a fish dart. So I spooked him out of some of these rocks. We're back, we just got to that dark stretch, so it's little chunk rock. We spooked him, he started running. But what I've found is that when these fish run across these flats out here, they don't really have anywhere to go. They've already picked the spot that they wanna hang out in. So they tend to just run for a while and then stop. And as soon as you're not right behind them, they act like it never happened. They're still willing to eat. So I fired ahead of that fish with a tube, hopped it a few times, got its attention, and he came right over and ate it. And if this wind will lay down, truthfully, that's what I'm hoping we get to do together this afternoon. If it'll lay down and get calm, where we can see big ones from a distance, we've got a real shot to catch them. And I really wanna bring you guys along live, raw like this, because when it's going great, it's incredible. You feel like a hero. I mean, you see a big one, you lead them, they turn, they eat it. You got a fish of a lifetime in your hands that you saw. They're not on beds, they're just out sunning. They hunt up in those shallows. But I'll tell you what, when it's going wrong, when you're casting and they're spooking, or they come up and they eat, but they miss it, they just get the tails, you swing and nothing, and you know that was the fish you're out here for. That end of it is brutal. And either way that it goes, I think it would be really good for you guys to see. It's a lot of fun, it's extremely challenging, and you've got a shot at truly fish of a lifetime. All right, it looks like the battery's about to die, so I'm gonna switch batteries and we'll get right back to it. Was hoping we'd get another quick one on the tube. No such luck. We'll keep fan casting with the sleeper.
I'm over the top of this dark bottom now, just that little chunk rock. So I'm really having to study it hard, looking for movement, looking for a fish trying to skirt away from the boat. Because if I can see them, I can usually catch them. I can usually lead them. Nothing. It's that little pocket of fish. I was hoping that was the start of something right through here. <laughs> Get some really pretty colors. Nice. Felt a rough spot right there. Get this retied. So if you notice, I'm making these just giant hook sets. That's because I'm fishing straight fluorocarbon, not braid deleter. 
You guys know how much I love Braid the Leader. It hurts me to throw fluoro. But because of what we're doing today, I'm throwing fluoro. Now it's not particularly light. It's 12 pound assassin. But as long as I've got chop on the water, they'll eat it. So the reason why I'm doing that though, whole spool, is because these fish are on this dirt shallow flat. You know, we're only in like five or six feet of water. So when I make a bomber cast and let it go to bottom and I'm coming across, that fish might have my line run in front of him for 40 or 50 feet before he even sees the bait if I don't know he's there. So I don't want a bunch of braid running in front of a fish in crystal clear water before it ever gets to the leader, before it ever even knows that my bait is there. Does that make sense? So I'm fishing that straight line because I'm on such a flat bottom. If I was fishing on a slope, even in this clear water, I wouldn't care because I could go to a longer leader, which is actually what I am doing on all my spinning rods. My spinning rods, I'm still running braid, but it's just paper thin, you know, eight, 10, 12 pound braid, really, really light stuff. And then I'm running 20 to 30 foot, either six or seven pound uh, sniper fluorocarbon leaders. Uh, so again, super long leaders, but there because that braid is so small, I think I get away with it. But just to be sure, I run those monster, monster leaders.
All right, we're just about to the point where I'm ready to transition to another spawn. Is it that one? I got a fish right here. ran from it. Oh, here he comes, here he comes. I can just barely see him through the chop on the water. I just see his color. Darn it. It's a black fish on a white bottom. I've drifted maybe 40 or 50 feet already, but I think I still see him. I have to move back up and look. Yeah, I totally lost him. Darn it. Looked like a good one. I couldn't see him really clear. But he had some size. Now I'm just fanning. You know, wondering if maybe he went on down the bank. I can see back pretty clearly. I can see that he's not up there. But this way I've got chop. I can't see anything. Oh! <laughs> that must have been him. There we go. Oh, that's a little one. That's a different fish. Thank you anyway, friend. Appreciate it. This one came out off the dock. But again, smaller fish. Thank you. Here's a better fish.
sees it. He sees it. Didn't do it. Which way are you going? This way? That's not a bass. What is that? It's either a rainbow or a laker. Let's see what we got. Calm down, calm down. Relax, relax. Relax, relax. What are you? My goodness. You were just tying yourself up in a knot, bud. Okay, good. Check that out. Bonus fish. Awesome. My goodness, he made a mess out of that net. See, I'm telling you, I can see the color. I can tell they're fish. But beyond that, I can't see much. I just thought that was a better bass. Obviously not. Boy, he made a mess out of all this. All right. As soon as I get this all retied, I'm going to finish this dock because there are bass here. Apparently, there are trout here. And then we're leaving. Now this first run, I've got a few places I want to take you guys today. If this wind will chill out. If I took you to where I really wanted to go right now, well, you guys would live through it, but you'd get to watch me get myself killed. It really needs to lay down. It's way, way, way offshore. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to make a run. Now it's still a long run. And this is, again, this is uncut. So I'll do what I can about the wind noise for you guys, but you're coming on the run with me. So we're going about 10 or 12 miles, give or take, maybe a little further, to the next spot. But we'll hug a shoreline at least part of the way. So that's going to protect us. So we don't go out there and get ourselves killed. That's for our next spot. But if that wind really does relax, I'm taking you guys way, way out. And we're gonna go have a good time. But given the conditions, I'm having a pretty good time right now. Just wish these fish would get a little bigger. Oh. And again, it's just because we're out here. If we were anywhere else, these would be awesome fish. Any of these fish would make a great day. But this place has the potential for giants. And if the wind will allow us, I think we can get to them. We're up underneath this dock. Missed 
the little fish again. I think the biggest fish in this section is that trout. Beautiful rock bar. I can't believe we're not getting a better quality fish here. All right, the time has come. I'm gonna get these rods strapped down, life jacket on, kill switch on. It can be a little eerie when you head out on the big water. Just have to prepare for the worst and be careful and take your time. So again, 10, 12, 14 miles north is where we're headed. Buckle up. If you don't wanna watch the run, again, down in the video description, we've got those jumps. So you can jump right to when we get to the next spot. But if you wanna watch it, here we go.
All right, we're less than halfway to the next spot. I hadn't intended to stop here, but with the wind blowing across this point, it just looks too good. We've got to adapt to the conditions and at least try it here for a little bit. I should add, not only is this not where we're headed, I've never even fished here before. It just looks good. There's big boulders, wind blowing over the top of them, a shallow point. There's only one way to find out. I'm hoping there's big ones right up on top in that blowing waves in the shallows. want to go really shallow so we're going to raise all the motors
This looks amazing. Giant boulders all over a one to four foot flat. But I'm thinking the fish are gonna be on the inside line. That's why I'm crossing it so quickly. We'll fish the last boulders on the bay side, not on the open water side. I could be wrong. We may be out of here in another five, 10 minutes, but it's definitely worth the stop.
yet to see a single fish up here on this thing. <laughs> but they'd be really easy to miss in the wind. This is all chunk rock, there's no sand. So they blend right in unless they're moving. We'll go down through one or two of these docks. If we don't see one, that's it. We're going to continue on. There is nothing, but I've got a beautiful rock to sand transition. We need to look at that and then we're on our way. Probably two more minutes unless we get a bite. this specific place but this is the stuff they love to sit on in general
four short strikes and one cat. Oh, there he is. Oh, that explains it. Little guy. I'll put a tube up there real fast. And if they don't get drastically larger, we are out of here. Same size. Thank you, bud. It's just a perfect rock point. Just chunk rock. It comes out and meets this dark line we've been working our way in on. They're sitting right where it all comes together. They're the absolute best place to be but they're small. That tells me about all I need to know about this location. I mean, we're gonna give it one or two more just in case there's a good one in the mix, but if the tiny fish are sitting on the very best spot, that's not a place you wanna be. If that's time to go. All right, here we go again. I'm gonna change batteries and we'll take off.
I'm not so sure that this wind is actually going to lay down today, but we're in a really good area now. The other area I want to take you is another like 12 or 14 miles completely offshore. It would be huge out there right now, uh, but this is a really good spot. So let's see what we can do here. Better quality fish. Now we're talking. Awesome. Let's hope that's the start of something there. That's great. Right off the bat. So what we pulled on, pulled up on now, is completely different than where we started. Where we were was in the, not the back of a bay, but leading into a bay on big sandbars. Essentially a, a secondary point, if you will, but on a grand scale. Where we are now is offshore. We're out on a huge ridge, and as that ridge runs, it's got these high and low spots. And that fish came off the very top of the first high spot and there's a whole series of them in here they're pretty far apart so i'll speed up to get to the next one but i think what these fish are are just fish that are out here because they want to feed but when that sun gets high again remember it was dumping rain the last couple days and that storm blew out just as we were getting on the water we had a little bit of rain even this morning so these fish are just pulling up to those high spots to sit in that sun take it all in and because they've got this wind they're willing to feed too so we'll continue moving up along these different high spots. 
I wish we could throw some different baits. I'd really like to throw the hair jig out here, but it's just too light. I can't throw it in this wind, especially when I can't put eyes directly on the fish. But it's working, we're catching them, and I think we're gonna catch a bunch more. going right along the top of a high spot again. No bites this time. It's going to dip and then come up onto another one.
that's a nice one. There we go. You guys that have stuck with me this far, I think we are about to smash some really, really big smallmouth. Yeah, that thing swallowed. We'll go ahead and do a retie. When you start getting that feeling you're around the big ones, that is not the time to mess around. See how this line is a little bit sprung, it wants to twist up. See that? That's when it's time to take 10 feet or so off the end of that rod. That line at the end is getting really stretched every time you hook a fish. Take all that off. Start fresh because you don't want to hook an absolute giant on a bad section of line. That just leads to heartbreak. Now again, if you guys are just chiming in here, just showing up. Today is a full length video. You guys are along for the entire day of fishing. But if you just want to watch the highlights, the highlight reel, if you will, if you open up the video description, the same place that we include the links to the exact bait, the color, the weight, the rod, everything, the same place will put timestamps in there. And you can click on those timestamps. You want to jump right to the next fish catch, the next fish catch, so you don't have to watch it all. But if you want to, you can just stream the entire thing. Just come along for an entire day of fishing with me. I'm having a great time. Hopefully you guys are too. And hopefully that wasn't random because that was a lot longer fish. I think we're going to get a big one out of here. When they start out feeling like a rock and then head shake, that's when you've got the right one. Oh, that's a good fish. Yes. Stay pinned. That's a big, big one. I cannot believe we just retied. Yes. We took the time to retie, to sit, oh my gosh, to sit down, to do it right. This is why you take the time to do it right. Oh, it's a giant. Oh man, what a fish. We're gonna get a weight on this one. I might even take a quick break, pause the video so I can snap a couple good quality pictures because that is a big fish. And then we'll get her turned right back loose. Did you see that rod load up like it was like it was snagged? And then she head pumped. That's when you know you've got the right fish. Preparation is everything, guys. We could have hooked that fish on that old line and been in trouble. Let's weigh it. Oh, 
Oh man, she's bigger than I thought. 6.20. Almost a six and a quarter. Are you kidding me? I'm so glad you guys were here for this. What a giant. All right, I've got to take some pictures and I need the camera. And then we'll let her go together. Amazing. All right, guys, I dropped her in the live well. Got a beautiful photo. It's time to let her go. Six point two pounds. Just, just unbelievable. So much fun. Here we go. I'm so glad you guys are here to do that with me. Let's keep going. Obviously, I'm going to retie again. There might be more giants up here. Man. What a big small mouth. It's not a new personal best, but it's so big. So awesome, I'm all jittery. Man, when you hit them and that rod just loads and goes nowhere, you just, uh-oh, you just know what's coming. But you don't know if it's a five pounder or a six pounder, you know, that's unbelievable. And that was on that three inch Dark Sleeper, the Wagasaki color, half ounce. Again, I'm throwing it on 12 pound, straight fluoro. It's an X-Pride. Here we are fishing for some of the biggest smallmouth on the planet. I've told you, we use precision gear for that. We use high-end gear. You know, I've got Stella's, NRX's, Conquest laying up here. But that X-Pride just is amazing. I love them for the price. Throwing an X Pride with an Aldebaran, catching these giants. Now, she chewed the fins up a little bit up here on the top. And you don't need those fins, they're just for profile. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim some of that off so that it doesn't mess up the action of the bait. A little bit more. Still leaves that hook point mostly hidden. This bait will just keep right on catching. I hope. Amazing. 
I'm still so shaken up by that fish. That is so awesome. Oof, when you lose a giant, it shakes you up. When you land a giant, it shakes you up. Man, I'm so glad you guys were here for that. Came right off. Three pounder, beautiful fish. In case you're wondering what I'm doing up there on the graph, every time we catch one of these fish, I put a waypoint on the graph. Now I'm not marking something specific, right? It's not a rock pile or anything like that. All I'm marking is the places I got bit. And the reason why is that these fish are, again, almost never alone. They love to school. They love to be in groups. And out here offshore like this, it's not like they have somewhere else to go. So odds are that fish is not alone. It's too wavy for me to be able to see. If it would, if it would lay down, if it would get calm, I mean, the other baits I have here are a tube, a hair jig, and a weightless Senko. That tells you exactly what I was thinking I would do today. Come out here, see these fish from a great distance, creep up on them, lead them, and then catch those fish. But with this chop, I can't see anything. So I waypoint the zones where I'm getting bit, and then as we come back through, I know the likely areas where I should get bit again, because again, there should be a group of fish there. Now, this water is crystal clear, probably 25 to 35 feet of visibility. 
there's good and bad with that. You know, that freaks people out. People are afraid to fish that clear water. Understandably so. You know, the fish see you from a mile away. That's why we're not catching fish after fish after fish right now, because they're seeing me, right? I hook that first one, the others follow up to the boat, they see me and they start leaving and they go far enough that I can't see them. That's all they do. They just go out there far enough that we're not looking at each other anymore. And then they settle back down. So that's the tough side of that clear water. Now the upside is actually the exact same thing, but you apply it differently. The upside is also that the water is crystal clear and the fish can see a country mile. So you can take a bait like a tube or a Senko and when you spook that fish and it starts to move away from the boat, you give it the room that it needs to get away from you, to calm back down. And then you put a bait 20 or 30 or 40 feet away from that fish. And because the water is so crystal clear, they see it. And they, if they want to eat, once they've calmed down and they don't care that you're there, they'll swim right over and eat that bait like they never saw you. So it works both ways. Yes, the fish spot you sooner, they freak out sooner, but on the other end of the spectrum, when you make a cast, the area that you're fishing is so vast. Right? If I'm in chocolate milk and I'm flipping in two feet of water, the area I'm fishing is like this big. I have to land right in front of a bass. Out here, if I land in the middle, 40 feet one way, 40 feet the other, if there's a hungry bass, it can see my bait. And that is such an advantage. So don't let that clear water scare you. As you can see, these big fish will bite. We're throwing a lot of very light line, but that giant just bit on 12 pound because there's chop on the water. It breaks up the surface, which breaks up the light transmission under the surface, and it's harder for them to see that line. If it was slick calm, if it was a mirror, I couldn't catch them on 12. We wouldn't be throwing this. We'd be throwing the hair jig, the Senko, the tube. Hopefully that makes sense for you. And I'm trying to teach you this stuff because whether you come to the Great Lakes or go to some other clear water lake, I want you guys to be successful when you are out on the water because you can catch these clear water fish. You can use it to your advantage. And as we just saw, you can catch absolute fish of a lifetime in this clear spot.
I was coming right over the top of a boulder and just got hammered. I can't see a thing. I could see the boulder. I couldn't see the fish. Ah, <laughs> uh, buddy, two can play that game. These fish are so susceptible to a tube. I think it just it just looks like a slow moving goby. They just can't resist it. Except that one, he resisted it. Go figure. Back to the swim bait. same one that bit the cast before. Nice fish. Awesome. Oh, the face of my bait finally got destroyed. It's all peeled back. All right, we're gonna retire that one. See how easy that broke? The line's all nicked up again. Oh, I was thinking about switching anyway. As these waves get bigger and we're, we're fishing deeper and deeper going down this transition. The one thing about the dark sleeper is it likes to rise. I would have to go to a three quarter to continue to maintain bottom contact, which by the way, a three quarter comes in the exact same size. So it's not like it's a bigger profile. If you throw dark sleepers and you haven't thrown a three quarter to maintain bottom contact, you should try that. But for now, I'm gonna switch over to a tactical head and a Kitek, half ounce tactical head, tactical finesse head, to hold bottom really, really well in these conditions. 
3.3. Tap out, tap out. Alright. Oop. I just got really lucky that I didn't hook myself worse. I just had a shaky head come out the bottom end of this box and stick my hoodie. That was close. All right, this is the tactical finesse head. Profile, it's identical to the Matt Allen head that we've had for years, but Tim and I have wanted a version with a lighter wire hook for a long time. We finally did the tactical finesse head. So it's that same profile, that same action. It's got that same heavy rock to it, but a much smaller hook. Now it's no tiny little hook, right? This, this is a guppy head with a one-aught hook. See how small that hook is compared to this. But if I pulled out a Matt Allen head, it's way bigger than this. Hang on. We're just blowing out to the middle of Lake Michigan. So anyway, a Matt Allen head is a way bigger hook than that one. We needed that true in-between. The in-between is perfect for a 3.3, a 3.8, and a 4.3 high tech. And the other thing that we did a 3.8 in sun gill. That's what we're going to try. The other thing that we did is that hook, whether you get the little eighth ounce or a half ounce, it's the exact same hook in all of them. So you know it's a perfect profile for these baits. If you tried to put my head, the Matt Allen head in this bait, the hook is just too big. But this is perfect these smallmouth and spotted bass or wintertime largemouth. Perfect profile. We'll give that a try. Should be able to stay lower in the water column and hopefully get a better bite. I blew way back. It'll take a second to get back up there. Time is it? Oh, we're doing good. We can fish a while longer.
I'm going to double back the other direction. We'll run back through that stuff where we've already been bit. Hopefully, we find groupings of fish in those same areas. I'm going to get up above it and we'll cast downwind. Get longer presentations. See what happens.
off because the motor keeps propping out. I don't know that it's actually scaring fish, but it's in my head. Maybe they don't want a Kitek. They might be completely dialed on that Gobi profile. If you guys aren't familiar with the Gobi, it's a bait fish that's in the Great Lakes and it's their color changes a lot. They got a short, fat body, a great big fat head, big fins, and they love to sit right on the bottom. And the smallmouth just pound on those things. It's a huge factor of why these Great Lakes smallmouth are so big. They love to eat those gobies. The Kitek, you know, it doesn't have any fins, it doesn't have that big fat head. Still a fantastic bait fish profile. Some days they're absolutely on one or the other. Some days they're eating both. You just don't know. We'll throw this tie tack a while longer. I've got one more half ounce in that same color dark sleeper. I don't have any three quarter, and I wanted a three quarter. But I've got one more half. We might have to switch back to that. Great big boulder out here behind us. Sitting out on the sand all by itself. That should have one.
might not need to switch back after all. Got to a spot that looked perfect, and it was. Thanks, bud. So awesome. I hope you guys are having as much fun as I am. It was just too far with straight fluoro. Just too far. Oh! Oh, it's a big one. Do it, do it, do it. Oh no! Tube, tube. Here we go. Where are you? Where are you? Is that him? Oh, I lost him. Quick. It's a big fish. In these waves, they just disappear. Shoot. If it was calm, this would be so much easier. We could throw right back to that fish and get him. That was another really big fish. I mean, it's so hard to tell how big in these lakes, but four plus at the least, and maybe big, big. the worst possible conditions for a weightless Senko. But with this clear water, you know they can see it. He's somewhere right up there.
trying to get that slack down so I don't have a giant bow. I'll have no clue when I get hit. Now that we're back up in these shallows, that half ounce is just too much. It actually gets down and stays down. I'm gonna stop the camera for the battery, tie on another dark sleeper. We'll run through these one more time. All right, if you guys aren't familiar, I really didn't plan to come at her and just throw basically one bait all day, but this is a dark sleeper. It's a mega bass bait, but it's not very expensive. And you saw how many fish that last one held up to. And all it is, is just that splitting face. I could super glue that right back together as soon as I get back and go another 15, 20, 30 fish. But that's it. It's a little goby profile. See that fat head, big fins. And we love these yellow colors for smallmouth. That's why on the Kitek, I went to that sungill color. It's actually a very, very similar color. They love that yellow profile. I mean, they like all sorts of different colors, but that's just one that I've got confidence in. Tim and I have done so good with it time and time again on big smallmouth. That chartreuse blue. We've got a couple other bluegill colors too. Just smallmouth love bold colors, even in crystal clear water. It's amazing. All right, that last one was big. We're ready. Hopefully we can find him. Amazing. These are both half ounce baits. This one doesn't touch the bottom at all. That sleeper with that big fat chin just rides up a little bit. You can get away with a lot heavier bait than you think. Again, I, I wish I had three quarters with me, but I've used them up. We've been up here fishing, not necessarily here, but fishing up here in and around Lake Michigan. Some of the small lakes, some of the big lakes out here on the actual big water for a few weeks. When we got up here, we were with Tim and Tanya and their kids. We all settled in here and then we had our buddy Jared come up for a little while. Our buddy Coop came up for a little while. We 
we met up with Kobe, another good friend of ours. You guys have seen Kobe before. Just an incredible smallmouth guy that lives in Michigan. He came up and met with us for a little while. We just had a blast with the families and with a bunch of really good anglers on the water. Today's kind of the culmination. You know, I think this will probably be our last video from this series, this trip up north. It's been an amazing trip. Fishing with all these great anglers, spending time with friends, catching giant smallmouth. And we're not even up here at prime time. You know, these great lakes, there's one. These great lakes tend to go fairly early. Oh, it's a nice fish. Most people don't fish them in the middle of summer like we are right now, but that's just how the timing worked out for us. That's when we were able to come. So we've come and we've worked hard. To figure out these fish. A lot of people like to fish up here early spring, late fall. Not really summer, but you can catch them anytime if you put in the time. Loaded up. There's a boulder out there by itself. I like those little outliers, those ones that are just a little farther away. A boulder by itself. It's just a prime big fish spot. They love to own a whole spot like that where anything that comes by, they can run out and eat.
think we might have worn out our welcome on this spot. We'll go a little bit further. Again, I know there's a bunch of big ones here. And if it was calm enough, we could see them and we could target them. But, you know, we take the conditions, we take the hand we're dealt, and we do the best we can. I'm going to continue down this for just a minute. If we don't get another bite, we'll regroup. I saw one spot on the way up here, an island out in the middle of nowhere, that it looked good, and I've never fished it. We may stop out there on the way back. We'll see how this goes right up ahead. Again, outside of this rock, it's just sand. You take a big smallmouth, you put it out on the sand, and all of its food will see it coming. So these boulders present a perfect spot for these fish to sit and to ambush from. They can sit right up against that boulder in the shade and dart out and eat a meal. Same thing with those color lines. If they sit right on the bottom on a dark spot, Anything going over the top doesn't have as good a chance of seeing them as it would if they were out on that sea. So as I'm cruising here, everything out here is white. Everything out on that side is white, but right on this ridge, there are some rocks, and that's what we're targeting.
and I'm not seeing anything at this end. <laughs> Is that a fish right as I say that? I can't tell. No, it's not. Nothing here. That fish was just out roaming, that one that I just missed. Looks like he was just cruising up here in the shallows. Now we're nearing the end of the high spot. Right here at the end where it transitions off. Right where it breaks, we might get another shot of the big one. We'll see. The original place I wanted to finish on with you guys, I told you, is another drive way out in the middle of nowhere. This wind is not laying down at all. I do not think it's safe to go out there. I wish it was, because I think we could get another really, really big one. The conditions are set up right for it, but there's a lot of things I'm willing to do for a big smallmouth. Getting myself killed, that's not one of them. And I think that could be what would happen. Um, so we're gonna finish here and then maybe we'll hit that last spot I was talking about that I just saw as we were running up. I've never fished it, uh, but we might drop in there and try it just for kicks before we call it a day. Another great fish. Come here, buddy. Thank you. Awesome. 
in some ways these fish are so predictable. The reason why I said there would be a big one at this end is because it's the end. It's right where it rolls. So these biggest fish, they take the very best spots. They don't mess around and they certainly don't share. They come up and they claim really good areas. So in that way, they're predictable. As long as there's not a bunch of boat traffic beating up, ooh, beating up on those fish, the big ones should sit right on the good stuff. It's not until they start getting thrashed on that they start shifting around. <laughs> Unbelievable. So much fun. All right, one more battery change, and then we'll run down. We'll try one more spot on the way in. Well, of all things, while I'm changing a battery, a bass boat ran by us out here in the middle of nowhere. I went right to that area I was thinking. So I think we're gonna run the other way. There's a point in here straight in from us that's shallower 
we'll get up on the edge of that point for a little bit, work our way in. If we get on some good quality fish, we'll keep going. If we get on smaller fish like what we started with today, I think that's where we'll end it. Let's head up there and have a look. you're wondering that was an overheat alarm we're good we were up in that shallow water I'm just gonna tell on myself we were up in that shallow water I had the jack plate all the way up I had the trim almost all the way up I brought the trim down jumped up on pad but I left that jack plate all the way at the top when I trimmed up, we're up so high that motor started losing water pressure, started getting too hot. Dropped them down, we're fine. Remember earlier today when I said it was amateur hour? Well, that ended, we caught a six pounder. Now we're back to amateur hour. Let's see if we can catch a couple more fish. So misleading. I shut down because it looks like we're in shallow water, but we're in 18 feet still. I guess we'll scoot a little farther up. Let's get to it.
I'm gonna cruise up here up to this really shallow stuff, then we'll work back behind this point. There's actually some protected water. We'll see what kind of fish are here. Should just take a few minutes to find out. It's way too shallow up here. I'm just trying to get over the top and tuck back into this pocket.
see that lone dock up there? So far, I don't see any transition. It's all bare sand. So there may be no fish here at all. But if there's no boulders, if there's nothing out here, the shade of that dock could be incredible. And I might finally get my chance to throw that weightless Senko around. Starting to get into a little bit of rock. Got a nice transition here. It's all leading into that dock. Nothing. Let's try that Senko. I 
thought this was a floating dock. It's not. It's fixed. It's concrete. So there's not actually anywhere for the fish to get under it. They could just sit on the edge of the wall. But I don't see any fish here. try this next one so we'll try that sailboat if we don't get bit we're gonna call it a day oh there's a big one darn it I need a tube where is he where is he lost him. He's out here somewhere. Just one lone fish. Totally catchable when they're out on the flat like this. If you can keep an eye on them. Shoot. I lost him. Just one fish out here by himself. Yeah, he's gone. I looked away to switch rods and he vanished. Well, that's encouraging. At least there was one fish here. Just one fish, all by himself. Strange. We're gonna go try that sailboat. If nothing happens, we'll call it right there.
Oh, there's one. There was a buoy underwater. He was suspended on it. Oh, he had it. No. Oh, that's that heartbreak. He just had the tails. Sometimes they'll come back. He bailed off that buoy, started running. I just threw that tube blind. Reel up the slack and it's heavy, but he just had the back end. Oh, here's something. Looks like another buoy anchor. Oh, there's that fish. He's going right back out to his buoy. It's amazing how willing they are to eat if they don't think that you see them. He might even come back and eat that same tube again. These fish in these areas, and it's not like they get a lot of pressure. There he is. These guys are not willing to come and do what it takes to catch these fish. So when you do finally get around them, they're pretty crazy. Thanks, buddy. Ooh, gave yourself a headache. Nice fish. All right, let's continue to work our way to that sailboat. Then we'll go from there. big concrete anchor down here, but no fish. We're in nine feet of water. I might as well be looking at the bottom of the bathtub. Crystal clear. So these sailboats, whether or not there's a fish on this one, these sailboats are no different than a boulder on the bottom. They're up on the surface, but they're casting a shadow. They're creating a place that that smallmouth can sit and hunt. So any sort of a boat up in the shallow water can be excellent. This one's out in about 10 foot, out over sand. It's the only cover around. There might be some up under it. We'll find out. How you doing? Yesterday. Boy, isn't that the truth? Hey, there's usually one under here. <laughs> That's exactly what I was hoping for. Yeah, I usually save when I come out here. You mind if I catch him? Go for it. If you don't, somebody, somebody else calls me. <laughs> Boy, that was an incredible amount of rain. Gee, how big is that inch? 250? Yeah. yeah what, what's, the, what's the things on the side there? Those are talons. So what those are is uh, essentially an anchor. They'll go down 15 feet and stab the bottom to hold you in place. Yeah. What do you call them again? It's called a talon. Oh, I lost my bait. Looks like that fish will make it another day. Probably be chattering too much. <laughs> hey, have some fun. You have a good one.
I don't know if you guys could hear that interaction. I ended up losing my Sanko. It just plain came off. But the boat owner was there and he said, there's usually one under there. He didn't mind that we were fishing it at all, but he had seen the smallmouth that sits under his boat. Too funny. Nothing there. All right, guys, I think we're gonna end it here. You know, a couple of points that I really wanna talk about. The fish out here, like I was just saying, they're pretty crazy. They don't actually get fished for that much. Now, there are some areas, whether you're in the small lakes up here in the North Country, or you're actually out on the big water, out on one of the Great Lakes, there are some areas that just get pounded into the ground. But then there are a lot of areas like this that are just out on their own that for the most part just do not get fished. I mean, there's people around, but it's nothing like the rest of the country. It's not like what we have at home. It's not like what you guys have at home. There's just nobody around. So the fish themselves are very catchable. They're very fun. It's just the getting to them. You know, and that's what I wanted to talk to you about before this was done. I wanted to emphasize that for a second. So first off, I'm really glad that we did this out here today because you got to see the highs and lows. We started off catching small ones. Then all of a sudden we're catching fish of a lifetime. We're catching monsters. And then all of a sudden we're catching nothing. And we're scratching to catch another fish, trying to build a pattern. And in a normal video, you don't see that. And that I think is one of the biggest faults on YouTube just across the board is that you don't see the highs and the lows, the struggle, the time, the effort that an angler actually puts in to catch fish. I mean, there are days where we get on the water and just smash them from the word go to the end, just smashing them, catching big ones. You catch a big one on your first cast. But there are also days where you put in tons of work or day after day after day putting in work to get those fish. So today to see the highs and the lows, sticking with it, making big long runs, you're running 12, 14 miles to get to that next spot. And then sure enough, there's a giant, it's worth it. And leading into this, you didn't see the thousands and thousands and thousands, literally thousands of miles that we had to drive in the truck just to get here. There's a lot of effort that goes into it, not just in creating a video, but in the actual effort of coming out and pursuing big bass anywhere in the country. The guys that are consistent are putting in an incredible amount of time. Now, all of that said, the fishing up here is amazing. It's worth doing. It's worth coming out on the big water and chasing these fish. But I do want to tell you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my dad hat on for a second and it it's strange because some of you guys are 12 years old, some of you guys are 85 years old, and I don't have a, any business telling any of you what to do. But if you're going to come out here, be careful. The place, I had a third spot I wanted to go with you guys today, and we would have fished a couple more hours, but we're not going out there. The wind is not laying down. Now we're in a little pocket, so here it's laying down. But out on the big water, it's not laying down like they called for. Now, could we go out there? I think so. It's blowing 10 to 15 miles an hour out there right now, according to the app on my phone. We could probably go out there, and if we got out there, we'd catch them. But we're on the big water. It's no joke out here. The weather changes fast. Things happen that are completely 
unpredictable. Wind will come up in an instant. I mean an instant. Storms will just form out of nowhere. If you come up here, be careful. This is not the place to take risk. The big water, this is Lake Michigan, but all these lakes are the same, all the big lakes. It's not the place to take a risk. So could we make another run today and catch some big ones? I think so, but we're not gonna go out there and gamble. That wind didn't lay down like it was supposed to, which tells me that today's weather is unstable. It's not doing what they expected, so we're not gonna go for it. We're gonna live to fish another day, and we're gonna be thankful for all those fish that we caught and that true giant that we caught in the mix. If you guys enjoy this style of video, let us know in the comments. If you don't, let us know that too. But it's nice to mix these in once in a while. It's a lot of effort, and I know it's a lot for you guys to take in and process too. But it's, I think it's healthy to see that actual transition, follow an entire day of trying to find fish, trying to build a pattern, finding them, losing the pattern, starting over, catching them the ways we think we will, but other ways, not at all. I mean, we never even got a hair jig wet today. We never even made a cast with it. That was one of the main baits I wanted to throw. It was just blowing too hard. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Down in the video description, we'll link all the baits, just like every video. Link the gear I was using, the baits, the colors. You can come up north, you can catch giant fish, but you can do this stuff at home too. If you live on or near a Clearwater fishery, remember, there's a plus and a minus. Those fish see you coming, so you want to go to light line, long leaders, finesse baits. But you also get to see them, and you can lead them and fish them in ways that you could never otherwise fish. It's amazing. Clear water is so much fun. I wish we got to do more of it. It's a blast. Guys, again, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Let us know if you want more of this style of video or more of our typical videos. And we'll talk to you soon.